Chapter 29, Esper. At least I feel this is definitely more spacious than the room I used to have, Rulo joked as he sat with Esper and Saga in what looked like a jail cell, the familiar lines of code replaced with cold, hard steel grids. After suddenly being captured and blindfolded, their captors freed their restraints a few hours ago. They didn't know where they were. Sis, look, there's even space for paintings, Rulo pointed out. Rulo, really? Now? She replied, rolling her eyes. Esper tried to peer around the bars. This is definitely not a city jail, he said. Is that good or bad? Rulo asked. I guess it gives us more, how could I say it, leeway in getting out of this? We'll get out of here, Saga quipped. Esper, still staring out the bars, clapped back. Your confidence isn't exactly trustworthy at this stage, is it? Oh, come on, Esper. Like, you could have done any... Saga stopped when she heard a noise in the distance. Rulo got up and stood alongside Esper, listening. At first, there was a slight shuffle. Within a few moments, it sounded like metal clanking together. Rulo's eyes lit up. As it became clearer, Rulo started flipping out. I knew it, he whispered loudly. I told you, it's Mother Mech. Psh, you guys thought I was full of it. She tracked us. Wow, screw her. There must be a reason she just gave the mech to us. Rulo said. Mother Mech rocked up in front of them. She laughed. Humiliating, Esper thought. She spoke. Oh, my dear Rulo, what a surprise. Oh, cut it, you knew all along, Rulo replied. Knew what? You tracked us, right? Oh, of course, yes. The bunch of you had a bit of too much fun in the Mech Institute servers. And the mechs, you gave it to us just like that. Why? You were tracking us, right? Oh, no, Rulo. That was just sheer coincidence and strictly business. If I would reveal how, I wouldn't exactly be a good partner to my associate, now would I? Let me just say, I got lucky when you brought Palma in. You'll soon see why, she said, winking. The mechs had trackers in them? Mother Mech just smiled condescendingly. My partners will be with you shortly. I suggest you play along if you value your freedom. She disappeared. Esper tried to piece together what she had said. They were tracked in the Mech Institute, and Palma being involved made it easier to track them? Did Palma tell his family? Is that why he hadn't been talking? Why was Mother Mech involved? Were Rulo's suspicions correct and that the mechs had trackers in them? It could only be the Emmers that caught them. I was right, though. We couldn't trust her, Rulo said once the coast was clear. Not really. It had nothing to do with the mechs. She didn't admit to that, Saga added. Guys, please, before you bicker, we need to figure out what to do before they arrive, Esper said. Well, what do we know? Saga asked. Mother Mech just told us. We had a bit too much fun in the servers, and she said Palma was important. It can only be the Emmers. Palma's chill, Rulo added. Do you think Palma represents the Emmers? They practically own the city. I'm sure that comes with some questionable power tactics, Esper said. Okay, well, assume the worst. They are going to kill us, Saga said. They would have already. Down in the storm drain, they wouldn't lock us up. They want something from us, Esper added. Yes, and please don't roll your eyes, but I know that Mother Mech wouldn't allow them to hurt me, Rulo said. Well, we couldn't trust her so far, could we? Regardless, if Esper's right, then what do we say? Do we just tell the truth? We don't even know who we will talk to. For all we know, Palma is going to rock up in front of us, Saga said. They gave that some thought. Esper's mind ran to the extremes, telling the Emmers nothing, to telling them everything they knew. He played out the conversations in his head. The options were bleak, but there was something that made them useful. There was animosity between the Emmers and Mason. They could sell their freedom in return for taking revenge. Although it might take Esper further away from Milo, Mason deserved it. We'll tell the truth, whatever they tell us, Esper said. Why? Rulo asked. Did you watch Clara's testimony about the tax raise? The Emmers hate the trunks. They hate Mason. They want it erased from the city. We know Mason. We've worked with him. We can be useful to the Emmers. So if they know that we worked for Mason, we can become a weapon for the Emmers. That's the best option, because we know absolutely nothing of what's coming, 
Esper said. Is that the best option? Mason will be happy if we just spill the beans on his hack. We'll be safe? Rulo asked. You're right, but we're not being held in a cell by Mason. The danger is here, right now. It's our best option. All right, but there's no reason to roll out the truth like a red carpet. Let's play hardball first and see what they want. We know, I mean, we hope we know that they don't want to kill us, so we have leverage, Rulo said. Not yet, at least. He looked at Saga and Rulo, thinking through what Rulo proposed. That makes sense. I agree, Saga said. Wow, I've never heard that being uttered by you before, Rulo said with a slight jest. Now's not the time to joke, or... Saga said before hearing new footsteps come down the hall. In front of them appeared Palma's parents, Clara with her usual collared shirt and hair bound in a tight ponytail, standing next to Tinu, with his wavy hair and tiny round glasses. Clara spoke. Do you know why you are here? Esper let them know that he knew exactly who they were. Clara and Tinu Emmer. We wouldn't exactly choose to spend our time in a cell like this. We know it's not the worst accommodation you can find in this city, but you tell us. Hard ass, trunk rat piece of shit, listen up. We caught you red-handed in the Mech Institute servers. Tell us what you were doing in there. No, Rulo said, playing hardball. We have all the records of the hack, all the logs. You tried to hide your tracks, but alas, you didn't entirely do the best job. We can submit this to the police and get you prosecuted. Then why are you keeping us? I'll tell you why. You need us, Esper said as he saw Tinu flinching. Clara continued, Astute observation. We need you to tell us everything you did on the servers. No, just send us to jail if you aren't going to be forthcoming about what you want. Esper said. Then so be it, Clara said, pacing away from the cells. Tinu ran after her. Clara, please. Esper couldn't see them anymore, but he heard them whisper urgently at each other a few feet away. They hadn't entirely left. Enough with the hardballing. I'm not going to jail. Not after everything we've accomplished, Saga said. Just wait, please, Esper said, trying to calm down the situation. They're whispering. Maybe we can hear. No! Saga said with a nervous quiver in her voice. Let's just go with the original plan to tell them we worked for Mason. Rulo stepped forward and decided on his own to resolve the impasse. He shouted down the hall, Mason! Immediately, Tinu and Clara rushed back. Mason? Clara asked. Esper stepped up to fill in. Yes, we worked for Mason. Tinu burst out. You tell us the truth and you get our son back and we will let you free. Esper frowned. That came out of nowhere. Those terms seem much more palatable than potentially taking revenge on Mason. What were they furiously whispering about? Palma, where's Palma? We haven't heard from him in days. Clara stepped in again. He got you into this mess, and there's no reason we have to explain the rest. We asked him to tell the truth, and it was his choice not to say anything. That is why you were captured. He chose to protect himself. Esper didn't know whether to be pissed off or happy. Palma finally chose himself. There was silence for a moment. Tinu continued, If you find him for us and bring him back, we can corroborate the truth with him, so no lying. Wait, so he didn't tell the truth initially? What makes you think that if we find him and bring him back, that he will corroborate it? Esper asked. You will convince him to. Otherwise, like Clara mentioned, you will go to jail. Esper sensed that this man really cared for his son. It's not a relationship he knew well. He wasn't sure whether to hardball against this or keep going. He didn't exactly know what a father's love for his son could do. There was too much uncertainty, so he accepted the offer. It was substantially more generous than the other options they considered, getting killed, going to jail, or missing out on the opportunity to retrieve Milo. We'll tell the truth and get Palma back, However, we're not exactly able to get out. That's correct, Tinu said, which is why only one of you will go out to find him. I'll go, Esper said, knowing that Rulo and Saga knew he was closer to Palma than they were. So now, tell us what you know, Clara prodded. Esper took a deep breath. He glanced towards Saga and Rulo and saw that they acknowledged their consequences with head nods. We worked for Mason, yes. We were tasked to hack the public car markets. Due to the Mech Institute servers being part of the Council of Seven, Palma helped us to get access to it. 
We successfully executed the hack, and Mason thus knows how to exploit it. He can manipulate the market for his gain without the city knowing. We did it through a method of discovering the random numbers before they are revealed. Esper didn't think about this before, but this reveal would mean that it's likely that Mason's access would be revoked. Clara's hands clenched. You are even more wretched low lives than we anticipated. So is your son then, Esper quipped. It slipped out. Tinu slammed the bars. Don't you call my son that! Esper flinched. He did indeed not know how a father responds to protecting their son. He backed off. So that's it? Clara relaxed a bit. And anything else? Did you steal any other records? Did some other snooping? When she asked that, Esper knew that she must be referring to the limiter. Esper at least hoped that's what she was trying to allude to. Was this his opportunity to get proof from the source? He had to try regardless of how he felt about Mason. We didn't spend much time in the servers, so no? Esper answered, laying down breadcrumbs. They were playing a game. Who would be first to spill their knowledge about this limiter without revealing that it mattered to both of them? Lies. You, of course, snooped around. What records do you have? I mean, yes, you check what processes are running to see how you might hack the markets. We know all the processes that we're running. Things like normal garbage collection, system files, a limiter, and so forth, he said. He hoped they would just spill the beans on what it really was. Esper wanted to blurt it out to get that confirmation. After a few moments of silence, Clara continued with a pointed finger. If I ever discover that you lied or that you aim to coerce Palma into lying... I can and will have you arrested for hacking into the servers and you will be sent to jail, she said as she opened up the cell to let Esper out. A few minutes ago, this freedom was all Esper hoped for. But now, it seemed like the battle of the minds ended without the answer he wanted. Clara didn't step over the threshold. Despite being free, it felt even worse, knowing that he unexpectedly came so close to getting the truth from them. He turned around and looked at the siblings, both of their faces a mix between fear, uncertainty, and elation. It worked, but they didn't know what frustration was still boiling within him. I'll be back, I promise, Esper said. They both nodded as Esper disappeared into the cacophony of the mech halls. He had to find Palma, and perhaps he could also find the truth. Esper went straight to the Grand Mansions first to get a taco. As he ate, he considered his options. One was to get in touch with Flora, but she wasn't talking to him. Before that last resort, Esper traced in his mind where Palma could be. He could be at the penthouse's library studying, but Esper shrugged that one off because he still didn't like heading up there. The second option was their usual skyscraper they sat on when watching the sunsets, but Palma wouldn't stay or live there. The third option was Bacchus, with Palma drowning his sorrows. Neither felt entirely right. Where would he run to? Where was his escape? The old airport. It's where he first met Palma. After the anomaly descended, the airplanes were fixed and sent off on discovery expeditions, only to suffer the same fate as the Hope Runners, never returning. The foolish expeditions were soon halted, and the remaining airplanes were grounded indefinitely. Using some of the public funds made available by the gridlock, the city turned the airplanes into a simulated flying experience. One terminal was kept as is, and the other was turned into a vacation destination. While they were dating as teenagers, Flora wanted him to meet her old friend from the penthouses at the old airport. She told him that they used to enjoy coming to the airport to imagine, to run around as kids and pretend to be airplanes. That day when Esper met him, All Palma did was talk about airplanes. He was a kind kid. Although Flora grew up in the penthouses, he thought she was an exception. Perhaps the penthouses' kids weren't such assholes they made them out to be in the trunks. The old airport was the best bet, where Palma felt safest. So after finishing his taco, Esper took the subway. It was a longer trip than usual because one of the water lines from the aquifer had burst into the tunnel. When he arrived he could sense the excitement among the travelers. Based on old footage, it always seemed quite authentic. Questionable food from local cafes, check-in lines divided by loyalty, security that harassed people, and stands of gridlock souvenirs. 
Esper strolled up to the old viewing deck, passing by extras that pretended to run to catch their flight. He scanned the room, and Palma was nowhere to be seen. Somewhat disappointed, Esper went to the viewing goggles, tapped some money into it, and peered out to the tarmac. He scanned the lines of people that were about to board. None of them were Palma. He was about to rethink his strategy when a familiar voice called out to him. If this was your first guess, then I really have to congratulate you, Palma said. Esper turned around and the same old Palma stood in front of him, his large backpack slung from his shoulders. I assume you saw. They have the A380s out on the tarmac now. What classics, huh? Esper replied. So what do my parents want for their prodigal son to return home? Seems he didn't want to do small talk and knew exactly what this was about. Esper laughed. (laughs) You know your parents well. Well, not as well as I thought, at least. I don't know what your parents told you. We got tracked by Mother Mech. They seem to be working together. Rulo was quite pissed off by that. They somehow found us and threw us in a cell in the mech halls. After discussing the situation with your parents, we brokered a deal with them. We told them the truth about the hack, and if I get you back, you tell them the truth, then they will free us and not send us to an actual jail. Palma laughed with a hint of disdain. (laughs) Nope, not going to happen. You got us into this mess. You chose not to tell them what happened. We were locked up because of you. Esper, don't forget who asked me to hack my own parents. You took advantage of me. You knew that I wanted to help Flora. You knew that I just wanted to help people. I got nothing from this except being exploited and in turn got everyone into shit. Yet you engaged me right now. Why? Palma just shook his head and walked away. Wait, Palma, wait. Esper shouted after him. Esper knew how he could get Palma to come back. The same bargaining chip he had in his back pocket for Mason. The truth carrot on a stick. Hopefully it would not backfire this time. There's something you should know about your parents. They're shitty people, I know, Palma said, turning back around. Esper made a, well, gesture with his body. It goes deeper than what you might know, Palma waited. Esper took this as a cue to keep talking. Look, you can always run away again, but there's a reason you'd want to talk to them. What? Just say it. When we were in the Mech Institute servers, we found a program called a limiter that seemed to interact with the public car markets. All that we could deduce is that, potentially, it also manipulates the markets. We're pretty sure about that. Palma frowned, and Esper wasn't entirely sure if Palma was confused or whether he was trying to recollect some memories. Esper continued to make sure Palma understood. The Emmers, your parents, are likely manipulating the public car markets. You... He hesitated, trying to maintain his composure. You wouldn't lie to me about this. That's what we believe. We didn't get confirmation. That will only come from your parents. Please. I'm sorry for roping you into this. Please free us. Palma stood in thought as the airport announced a passenger's name that was late to their flight. Esper wasn't sure if it was real or scripted. It was still difficult for Esper to understand what Palma was thinking or what his options were. At least Palma had an option to forgive his family. Don't for a second regret what you have, Palma. I know you've been close to your family for years. I know you might hate them right now, but realize what you have. And with that, Palma spoke. I will go see my parents. When Esper heard that, he added the caveat to protect himself. I suspect the limiter is why your parents jailed us. If this leaks, it could be damaging to your family. They don't know that we know. So please ensure that you go about this in a manner that does not reveal that I know about the limiter. If they know that we know, I'm sure they won't hesitate to send us to a real jail. For a moment, Esper wondered if he overplayed his hand again, making this more about himself than Palma. But Palma spoke, revealing that his train of thought went elsewhere. How are you always so sure of yourself? Palma asked. It seemed like a sincere question. I'm never sure. Being sure is for fools. I just gather information and then assign weights to the probabilities such that when I fail, it wasn't for the wrong reasons. Inversely, when I succeed, it is for the right reasons. Palma bit his upper lip, casting his eyes down to the worn carpet before looking back at Esper. Thanks. Sincerely. I'll make sure they release Rulo and Saga. He left into the bustling airport. 
Esper was left alone amidst the buzz. His constant oscillation between hatred and anger for Mason, yet desiring to join him to get closer to Milo, had not abated. In the background, the simulated noise of an airplane taking off sounded through the terminal. The announcer, authentically, barely audible, announced that flight GA-207 was ready to board. Esper, having become wealthy, newly free, and still alone, didn't know where to go. The irony of feeling this in a defunct airport wasn't lost on him.